used as a subject on tonight, living a holy life. Living a holy life. Y'all know anything about living a holy life? Y'all ready to all hang out. <laughs> and we're coming out of 1 Thessalonians 5. 1 Thessalonians 5. And we're really going to be uh, dwelling on verses uh, verses 21 through 24. But we're going to go through our, our scriptures tonight until we get to that uh, verses 21 through 24. I believe it's uh, beneficial to us. The word holy means to dedicate or consecrate to God for a religious purpose or, or sacred. Uh, a lot of times, folks think men, men living holy is a way we dress, the way we we put hats on and, and, and no, don't wear no stockings. We don't uh, wear right. uh, certain color suits. Right. Uh, a lot of folks think it's in all, that's all it is, is in your dress. Uh, but I know folks that look, that look holy, but don't live holy. Hey, right. 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 I, I know folks that go to holiness churches, but they ain't holy on the inside. You know, I, you know, I'm not putting holy churches down. I'm not putting Baptist churches down, Methodist church. Whatever church you go to, the word says, be ye holy for I am holy. That's yeah. what God says. And so we we have to acknowledge that holy living, holy living it, uh, uh, is for us. Yeah. Uh, what's happening today in our society, everybody's being rebellious. Everybody's saying, turn a, turn a close eye to the way people are living. Don't say nothing about them. They thank you, judge. Amen. But the word of God tells us to live holy. Right. Uh, we must understand that this, the second part of the meaning of holiness is a spiritual, perfect, and pure, untainted by evil or sin or sinless, saintly. Uh, it says, regarded with deep, deserving, deep respect, awe, reverence, or admiration. We, we, we know that if you say then you have a certain way that you ought to live. Right. If you're unsaved, you can live like you've been living all the time. Ain't no need. Ain't no need to say you're saved and you come in the church house and you still live the same way you were living before you said you had salvation. Mm -hmm. Once you get sal salvation, salvation dictates us to live a certain way. Mm -hmm. We live in a certain time, and I stated this before, we live in a certain time that nobody want to tell, nobody want nobody to tell them when they live it wrong. Amen. Everybody want to be accepted the way they are. But that ain't the way it is. Amen. If you say you have salvation, then you have a certain lifestyle. You have a certain way you're supposed to live. That don't mean you won't live right all the time. Right. And we don't get to that part where God gonna come in and do something to you. We'll get to that part in our lesson tonight. But the writer of uh, Thessalonians 5, he said, uh, he, he tells Thessalonian church to, uh, in verse 1, he says, But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I will write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so coming as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction came upon them as travail upon a woman with a child. They shall not escape. But when, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day shall overtake you as a, as a thief. If you're not living according to God's will, and you're not living according to God's word, notice now, I didn't say according to Baptist, or Methodist, or non-denominational, or Episcopal, or, or Catholic, and in Zion, Church of God in Christ, or apostolic, or I said, according to the way God's word said we ought to live, mm -hmm. then you won't be ready. Y'all understand that? Mm -hmm. If you meditate on God's word day and night, what good is it? What good is meditating on God's word day and night? Somebody, somebody, that's a question I got for y'all tonight. What good is it? To meditate on God's words day and night. No, you're not, you can't live that. Huh? You're not going to live against it. But what, what, what do meditation do? It's supposed to be strong. It should align you with God's purpose. Uh -huh. 
Uh, because you meditate on what he wrote in his word. You meditate on his goodness. You meditate on the things that he has blessed you with in life. You meditate and you're bringing that to your remembrance and you're bringing it down under the word of God. So when you meditate day and night or when you're praying to God, there is a purpose for doing it. You're not just doing it for religious purpose. You're doing it to align yourself and align God's spirit with you. Huh? You, you, you're invoking God's spirit to come upon your life. Yeah. Yeah, you're hiding that word. When you call me on the telephone, let me tell you, what good is you to call me and I never answer? What you gonna do? You're gonna stop calling me. Right. Why? Maybe you call the wrong number. You ever thought about that? <laughs> you got to do some research. That's what meditation do. Maybe he'll change his number. Maybe Google his name or something. You got to do some research. See, see, we come to church and think that's all that that's it. No, you got to have a personal relationship with God. See, when I call my wife, I expect her to answer. When she called me, she expected me to answer. Why? Because she got my number. And if I don't answer, she gonna text. And if I don't answer that text, she gonna go on her phone to location. You might as well answer. We both got that on our phones, and we know where each other at. And most of the majority of the time on your new call, if you sit there long enough and don't lock the doors and you got the windows down, it's gonna alert us to where that car is sitting at. Whether we want it or not, it's still a nerve. So, so what I'm saying is, when you meditate on God's word, see, when you when you live and hold it, that let God know that you appreciate what He told you. Mm -hmm. So, how would you know how to live unless you read the word? Right. And so, if you believe in Him, then you will, because you believe, then that ought to be a manifestation of God's word in your life. Amen. So, if you ain't living holy, there's no manifestation. You know, then you say, well, you're looking at me too close and you're judging me. Yeah. How can I see the way if you don't show me the way? God works through us. Amen. Yes, sir. Every now and then, my wife got to tell me something ain't right. You, 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 you zip what I'm saying, you know, you, you, you call it plucked up. I don't know. I think I'm looking really good. <laughs> somebody got to come and tell me. Then somebody might say, well, that's the way he wanted it. No, that ain't all the time here. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta say, hey, Rev, your collar up a little bit. Like some of y'all do sometimes. You know, the other day I went out of church and I had changed clothes and my shirt tail was hanging down below. I forgot to tuck my shirt in. And over there sat that folks told me and said, we thought that's the way you wanted it. <laughs> y'all know how to dress like that. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not wrong with you, just tell him. And just tell me. I come into church, I said, What in the world? I think it was. He told me, to Hey, where you doing? <laughs> I sit down and saw that my clothes was out. We, 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 we got to understand living holy is more than just a concept. Living holy means you got to get to know God's word for yourself, you got to learn. Yes. And once you learn, you, you start living by precept and example. See, there's no need to say God can do it for you if you ain't never showed nobody that he can do it for you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we said we be holy for I am holy. Then that lets you know that we should be holy because he are his. We should follow his word. I'm, I'm going to show you something tonight. When we get to that verse, oh. <laughs> what God will do for you. See, see, a lot of times we can't hit the mob. We we press towards the mob, yeah, right. and we preach that sermon plenty of times. We press towards the mob of our high call, yeah. but sometimes along the way we fall. Yeah, right? Yeah. God reach down and pick us up. Yeah, right. Why? Because we was pressing. Amen. It ain't gonna bother when you just still sit there. You've been sitting there for twenty years. You ain't pressing nowhere. <laughs> You ain't going nowhere. You living the same life you were living before you got saved. The only reason you ain't doing the stuff that they used to do because you just don't got too old to do it. Right. Stuff don't work right no more. So, so you can't run it. You
you can't run around like you used to run around. You can't run. That's right. Yeah. Right. So then he says here, uh, he says, but ye brethren are not of the darkness. In verse 4, that the day should overtake you as a thief in the night, as a thief. Ye are children of the light. Uh -oh. Huh? Amen. Amen. And the children of the day, we are not of what? The night. The night. Or the, or the dog. So we something different, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just think for a moment. Most church folks, you don't know if they church folks or not until you see them come to church. Mm -hmm. When you see them out somewhere, you like to hear and see anything. Huh? Yeah, y'all might look at some of y'all the same way. You like to say and do anything. Huh? I, I would like that too. Oh yeah. Huh? Oh yeah. Yeah, y'all don't y'all don't got nervous now. Y'all you know, y'all y'all you know, you know, might not be children of the light. <laughs> Listen to this. He said, therefore let us not what sleep as others, but let us watch and be what? So the only way you're gonna do that is you gotta live a holy life. Amen. You got you gotta live a holy life according to God. And the only way you're going to live a holy life is you got to read his word, you got to pray, you got to fast, you got to align yourself with godly folks, you got to, you got to, you got to think about holy things all the time. Amen. Anything not a part of that mind, but you got to learn how to fight with the word of God. Amen. Why? Because so a man thinks, so he is. So if you keep thinking about the wrong thing, you're going to go do the wrong thing. This song done already told you it's your thing. Do what you want to do. I can't tell you who huh? Who decided to <laughs> Yeah. Y'all can't y'all got to understand that the way church is, man. That's why people do whatever they want to do in church. Talk it what they how they want to talk, uh, look at how they want to look. Act the way they want to act, and then we want to know what happened to the world. The world starts with you. You turn the light, then you got to let your light shine. How you let your light shine? Live according to the word. All right, man. That's the only way you want to let your light. Let your light shine. Is all right when you're up there singing? Let your light shine. Is all right when you're preaching? Let your light shine when you're teaching Sunday school or when you're picking or you're serving inside the church. But what you doing outside? Is your light shining outside? Yeah. Well, Goddamn now. All right. Now it's up to you to bring your light up. Amen. Huh? Right. Then he says, you ain't supposed to sleep as others do. You right. got to be sober mind. Right. So don't let things catch you unaware. When stuff happens to you, as my sister said, 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 things are always coming at you. One thing out for another. Yeah. You, you got to be ready for it. Yeah. Why? Because God has already made you ready for it. Yeah. All you got to do is seek it. Ask for his protection. That's for his guidance. And he'll, he'll give you a way out of whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm a living witness. I ain't tell you something I heard. Yeah. I'll tell you something I don't live. Yeah, right. yeah he'll show you. Yes, he will. Then he says, for they, for they that sleep, sleep in the what? Night. Some of us don't sleep at night, do we? Don't tell the truth. Yeah. Some of us toss and turn all night long. Yeah. Can't get no sleep. And then when the daytime comes, you want to fall asleep in. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way our Christian life is. You're supposed to be learning and studying and praising God and worshiping God and, and, and fasting and praying and meditating on His Word, trying to get yourself right, living holy according to how His Word is said live. Uh, that's for the, for the day because you are you are you are, you are light givers. Yes. Uh, but most of the majority of the time we out there in the night, ripping and running in the night. Night time. Night time. It's the right time. Well, it's party, baby. Y'all ain't like y'all on them songs. It says here for the verse seven. It says, "For they that sleep in the they that sleep sleep in the night, and they be what drunken, are drunken and what in the night, huh? Yeah. But let us who are of the day be so." Putting on the breastplate of faith and love, uh-oh, 
Breastplate of faith and love. Can't have faith without love. Can't have love without faith. Huh? It says, and for an helmet of hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to attain salvation by who? Our Lord. But we can't do it without Jesus. Yes. That's what the writer was trying to tell us tonight. It says, who died for us, that whether we be wake or sleep, we should live where? Together, together in him. him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together, edifying one another, even as ye do. And we beseech you, brother, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord. Are over you in the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. And admonish you. Meaning that they are, are picking you up. Oh, you're doing a good job, baby. Keep on trying. Get back in there and do it again. Uh -huh. Yeah. Looking mighty nice today. But most of the most of the majority of the time we, we, we don't admonish one another. What we do, we put one another down like they didn't quite hit them all. We like to point out certain things in different people's lives. Mm -hmm. Let's 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 practice admonishing one another. Mm -hmm. uh, telling one another how we because because let me tell you a secret. If you are it ain't really a secret, but if you are a children of the light, a child of the light, you already know where you're dirty at. Amen. 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 That's right. That's right. Yeah. Car look clean outside. Got on all on the tires and the wheels are shining. But open up the door. Oh, yeah. I can't even get in there. <laughs> you already know what your car look like. Because you go. You already know what your life look like on the inside. Because you live it. Amen. But we'll put on a facade in a minute. Put on a suit, ain't took no bad now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We already know. God knows what our life looks like. Amen. He knows in the darkness, in the night, He knows what our life looks like. Because He looks high, He looks low, He sees everything. Amen. He know where He know where the possibilities are of, of you being at. He know where the possibilities of you doing things. That's why He gives you the Holy Spirit to give you strength to hit His mark. Y'all ever thought about why Jesus come? He didn't come because we were living right. Amen. He come because we couldn't get right. Amen. And then when he gave his life and he sat on the right hand of the Father, do you not know what intercede means? Amen. Somebody tell me what intercede means. On our behalf. On our behalf. Uh -huh. That means you're pleading for something on our behalf. Yeah. If you could live right, what are you pleading for? <laughs> y'all better think about it. Y'all got to analyze it now. If he pleading on your behalf. Right. It ain't because you're doing right. right. It's because you ain't right. Yeah. See, right. But the fact that he left and, and the Father sent the comforter yeah. right. to help you stay right. Yeah. The blood, all you got to do is say, Lord, forgive me. And God take your own back in. You got to mean it now. Yeah, uh, yeah you got to mean it. Yeah. That don't mean you ain't going to think about it. You always going to think about whatever it is you Then you said, Lord, help me not walk in the dark. Wow. That's right. Y'all got to think about it. Where we stop at, y'all? I don't know how it is. 13. He says, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Y'all see that? It said, and to be at peace. 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 Somebody always trying to start something. Yeah. Yeah. We was at a, at a shop yesterday and some men had come in and they was talking about basketball, some older men, and they was talking about basketball and some of the men around here in the hospital used to play. And they said, yeah, big They said, big used to play. Uh, I said, hey. they like, what? I said, that's my nigga now. <laughs> How long? Oh, he's a good man. He's a good man. He always been a good man, you know. But he played the ball, you know. This and that, you know. I, I had to let him know. I said I had to let y'all know. I was, I was listening, and I know you before you get to talking about something. You, ain't to, you know, you know how folks do. But they talk great. They talk highly of you. Yeah, they esteem you very highly. 
And so we, we, we got to know that that the world is listening how we talk about one another. That's right. How we do about certain things. How we treat one another. We need to learn how to esteem one another. We all know what we're doing wrong. Wrong and wrong. Let wrong be wrong and right be right. We all do wrong sometimes. That's right, somebody said. <laughs> we all have sin and fall short. Of it. Yes. Amen. And if you live long enough, you're going to sin and fall short again. That's why Jesus is petitioning the Father. That's why he's sitting there. That's why his blood, his life, actually his life is, is, is dictating to the Father that, that, that his blood and his suffering for us and his sacrifice for us gave us the right because we can't get right. It took that for us. It took that, that sacrifice. Amen. Yeah. That sacrifice. And that's what we got to do with one another. Sometimes we might want to cuss each other out. Why not make a sacrifice? Amen. Make a sacrifice. Be a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Smile at me like you do. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me what's on your mind. Just smile. Because if you don't open your mouth, I won't know. Amen. Amen. Then I won't feel bad. We're going to move on. Then he said, y'all listen to this one. He said, verse 14, he said, now we exhort you, brother, warn them that are unruly. Y'all know anybody that's unruly? They don't like for you to, they don't like for you to single them out and tell, tell them that they unruly. They want to do it their way like the Burger King. You know, they want it their way. But that's our job. All right. As children of the light, we shine light. Our lives shine light upon darkness. Yeah. People ought not to feel comfortable around you if they ain't under no good. Mm -hmm. But people pile right on in and sit up on the front row. Why? But they don't feel uncomfortable. Amen. Mm -hmm. Then he says, comfort the feeble mind. Mm -hmm. Support the weak. Yes. If I got a problem, and I tell you I got a problem. Don't go tell everybody Rev yeah. I got a problem. Right. I can't believe Rev got that problem. He ought to be past that. Well, Rev is human just like everybody else. Yeah, huh? <clears throat> if chicken is cooking in the other room, I can smell it just like you. <laughs> and I can't wait to get to it. <laughs> then he says here. Yeah. He says, support the weak and be patient toward. Oh, that's right. Amen. Even your enemies, God can work with them. Amen. So you have to be patient with them. Mm -hmm. It comes a time to where you got to put 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 light on something, mm -hmm. and you but you're not doing it to kill nobody. You're doing it for instruction. You're doing it to to construction to to be rebuild yeah. to help them see that the error of their ways. That's right. Right. That's why the purpose of, of you exposing something is, is to fix it, not, not to bury it out of you expose it. Right. Right. That's right. Right. And then he said, see that none render evil. That's hard, ain't it? Mm -hmm. None render evil. Because you cut me out of my head to cut you back out now. You know how it is. Whatever in you is what's going to come out you, right? Amen. So, so if you ain't living holy, you better watch out how you run up on me. If I ain't living holy, you better watch out how you run up on me. Because you got to remember, I ain't living holy. <laughs> huh? But I'm supposed to be living holy. That's the key. So sometimes you run up on folks when you when you say things the wrong way and you ain't been led by God, they let you hurt something. They might do something to you. You got to be careful how you run up on these preachers. <laughs> when you see them out right there, you better pray about it, and Lord, to help you, help you talk to them so you they can kind of straighten up because they might try to do something to you. All right, that's right. And then you'll find out how holy you is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll find out you might be missing them all. Amen. That's right. And then he said, comfort the, 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 the feeble mind and support the weak. Mm -hmm. Be patient towards all men. Yes. See that none are really evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, 
both among yourselves and to all men. I found out sometimes even when we uh, have disagreements, whether it's in the world or in church or whether it's in your home or family, a lot of times a good meal or Coca-Cola or Pepsi, just sit down and just enjoy it with each other. You ain't even got to talk about the situation. Sometimes it, it moves stuff out of folks' hall. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Everybody, I bought everybody one. Everybody, you know, sit down and eat and have a good time. You ain't got to keep on reminding folks what they done done 20 years ago, Come on, what they did yesterday. Right. You ain't got to remind them of what they already know what they did. Already know. And they sitting up waiting for you to come. You ever approach somebody and they, because they already ready. Yeah. But if you bring them a sandwich, <laughs> your fish might say, oh, or they might tell you, I don't want it. But just by you offering, right. Can change the moment. Right. 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 Offering help. I'm just using food. It could be offering anything that they need. Right. Can change the moment of the situation. They might, sooner as they finish, they'd be like, dog, I had a, a friend of mine. He, he, he left and went out of town and he wanted me to feed the pit bull. And my daddy, he asked my daddy to do it, but the dog tried to bite him and turn the food over. And uh, so I went out there and I had a stick. And he started grabbing at my pot upside the head with his stick. <laughs> and he moved back, and I put the food down there, and he looked down there, and I put his water bowl down there, and he looked at me, and I held the stick up. He stood there. When I walked away from everything, he came up there, and he ate. He didn't turn that note. Right. The next day I went, he didn't growl. Why? Because I had the stick. <laughs> Holiness is your stick. <laughs> he remembered that stick. See? So, so those that live holy amongst us, we remember who they are. Amen. And we straighten up when we get in their presence. Y'all ever been right there? You saw somebody, preacher or somebody that you respected? Their holiness is their stick. They ain't got to put up, they ain't got to worry about it you no more. Because you're going to show them respect because you see that stick. That holiness. The holiness is a stick. Now don't y'all go get you no stick. The holiness is a stick. Amen. Then he says here, rejoice evermore. Huh? Who in here don't have any problems? Huh? But don't let your problems stop you from rejoicing in the Lord. Because what you have could be ten times worse Amen. 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 than what you had. That's right. So we always rejoice in the Lord for as good as it is yes. with the hope that it's going to get better. Amen. Yeah. Because right. see, if you rejoice in the Lord, His Holy Spirit builds up and fills up inside you. And it kind of makes you forget all about what problems you got. Right. If you came in with a limp, you might still leave out with a limp, but you have it. Amen. <laughs> You got a pimp then, see. <laughs> Not the other pimp. I'm talking about, talking about the wall now. Yeah, talking about the wall. And then it says, pray without ceasing. See how it's reminding you? The writer here is reminding them what they're supposed to be doing to live. Living holy. Holy living. I'm holy, living a holy life. That's a very, very important. But you can't have it unless you do these things. It says in verse 18, in everything, in everything, give thanks. In everything, he said the good thing, you got to in everything give thanks. It said, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. If you give him thanks when you got it, you give them things when you ain't got it. That's right. The Spirit of God will still come and give it to yes. you. Yes. Yeah. He'll make you comfortable when you're uncomfortable. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He'll help you. Yes. Yeah. He'll give it to you. Yes, will. But you got to know it and you got to receive it. Amen. Right. He said, quench not the Spirit. You know how it is when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody did look over there and give it to me now. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> when she rock, you rock. 
That's right. That's right. Be glad for. Yeah, be glad. Be happy with them. That's what you do. Yeah. It said, "This find not prophesying." Yeah. When God has given somebody or shows somebody something in your life and they come and prophesy, here's what you do. You take it, you listen to it, and it, if it is confirming what God has already shown you, if it's not confirming what God has already shown you, wait and give it some time for you tell them, go on with me, I don't tell you that, you ain't got no nothing. You better know that God talks to, through folks. Amen. God talks through folks. Oh, yeah. Some time ago, my son told me, said him and his fellows was out at a, at a, at a restaurant. And it was a couple, a couple out there, a white couple, older white couple. I just see it like that. I hope ain't nobody offended. All these little young black boys was at a restaurant eating, having a good time, making noise. The white couple came over and singing him out. And told him, said, God going to use you. You're going to be a preacher. And, and they all laughed about it. You know, they got quiet, you know. And he said, you don't believe me, do you? He said, no. He said, he said, you broke one of your arms. God showed it to me. And he said, he looked around at the boys. Because he didn't know the man. And the man didn't know him. He said, but God told him to tell them, to, to him that. And he came home and he told me about it. I said, well, that must have been a prophet. He said, yeah, daddy, because didn't nobody there know I had broke my arm. Uh, and he told me what arm it was broke on. Yeah, and he told me how God was going to use me later in life. I said, well, all you got to do is keep on living and you'll see it. Yeah. He'll preach it. Yeah. He'll minister. Yeah. So, so, so God can show people things and prophesy in your life about what he, if they hold it, God will show them some stuff about Amen. you. Now, he ain't showing everybody, but I don't have folks come to me telling me that same thing. And I have been preaching for 20 years. God's going to call you one day. You're going to be a preacher. And I say, God ain't showed you that. You, you just looking at my zeal. Because <laughs> if he showed you that, he would have already told you I was preaching. <laughs> But sometimes God will send people back to prophesy yeah. to you and to tell you things because sometimes you need encouragement. Yeah. Sometimes you're not listening. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So he sends somebody else. He'll talk through his word. And sometimes he'll talk through songs. Sometimes he'll talk in ministry when people are up preaching. You get something that somebody else can't get. Because right. when the preacher is preaching, when the song is really lifting up Jesus, and everybody's praying like and singing like they're supposed to and praising God. God will send his spirit to give you just what you need. Amen. And nobody else would know it. Amen. Huh? Nobody else would know it. And it'll be almost like that person is talking to you person. That's right. Come on. Come on. <laughs> then he said in verse uh, 21. We are both in man. He said. Prove all things. When people come and prophesy to you, let the Lord prove it to you. Amen. You ain't got to run and chase. Right. Take it in. Get quiet. Stop meditating and fast and praying about the situation. Let God show it to you. Amen. Then he said, hold fast to that which is good. Amen. If it ain't no good for you, but it's good for somebody else, let somebody else have whatever it is. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Abstain, uh oh, I'm gonna mess up some folks now. Abstain from the very appearance of evil. Somebody, and I preached a sermon one time, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So evil sometimes is in the eye of the beholder. But evil is exposed through God's word and through holy living. So, some things may look evil, but it's not evil. Mm -hmm. Some things we count as evil, and it ain't even in God's word. Right. Amen. One of my pastors, I used to work with him, and I used to go to his house, and his wife would tell me before he get home, 
I would get to his house before he got home. She tell me, come on in, Rev, and sit down and enjoy the air conditioning till he get home. I said, no. I said, no, nah, I'm going to sit out there in the car. And a couple of days had, had went by, and he asked me, he said, why were you going to the house when my wife invited you in? I said, because your neighbor was looking at the young preacher going to the old preacher house while he ain't at home. He said, oh, I understand. You don't want more talking. I said, right. I said, I got sense enough to know how things is in the world. And folks will be talking about it even though it ain't about it. You know? So I had to look out and make sure that I stay from the very appearance of it. Won't not evil for me going in now. I was invited in that. He told me to go in there. I'm like, no, I'll go in there when you come home. So won't not evil about it. But it's just the way I felt that other folks could see. Right. Right. That's right. Uh, sometimes folks will say, well, I don't care nothing about how other folks see things. Right. I, I, you better care. You right. gotta care. Yeah. That's your light. On, your light can't shine. On, if, if you if, if, if I go in there and folks saying, if I went in there and folks said, hmm, he's sneaking around <coughs> with it. Pastor's wife. Pastor don't even know it, right? And then I come to their church and preach. I'm preaching about how good Jesus is. They, they preaching about how I've been sneaking around with the pastor's wife. <laughs> Y'all got to think about it. You got to stay from the very appearance sometimes. When the Holy Spirit hits you not to do something or not to go somewhere or don't come in somewhere or sit down or be quiet at certain times, do it. Don't quench the Spirit. Because the Spirit is there for your good. It's, it's there to make sure your light is shining. It might not be wrong, nothing wrong with me going to the bar and sitting there waiting on my food, but I tell you one thing. It sure is uncomfortable sitting there waiting. <laughs> and folks walking by, and I got my suit on, sitting there waiting on some food. So what I started doing, it was <coughs> the place over at Loki Mall, and we would go in there and get all our food and, and <laughs> I was sitting up in there one day, and, it, it, and the lady told me to sit down at the bar. So I said, don't go to that bar. She said, sit down at the bar, wait for you there, bring it, sit right there. I said, man, is anywhere else I can sit? She said, yeah, you, you can sit over here. I sit over there. As soon as I sit over there, I saw some church folks come in. <laughs> wow. Just thank you. Even though I won't do it now, I'm there getting my order. And they come over and shook my hand and talk to me and everything. But if I was sitting at that bar, the first thing they said, yo, he ain't even got out of church good in here at the bar. Ain't all the damn thing. Sometimes we just got to be encouraged and know. Sometimes we get caught up in certain situations. We ain't done nothing and folks will talk about it. You can't account for that. But when the Holy Spirit tells you not to do something or not to go somewhere and do something or you just don't feel comfortable with it, don't, I don't care the clothes you got on your back. Uh huh. My uh, my brother, my niece, um, when she got married, her husband played with. Mm -hmm. And they were in Durham on Sunday, and um, they went, and she was expecting. So with my brother, so they were together. I said, yes, we got to, and he's. He talked about it any time now. You see, if them women won't talk it, now you he is with that little young thing. Now, what are you doing with her? They thought it was his girlfriend or something. Yeah. And then said the women may have nerve to come up and ask her, well, who is this young lady? Yeah. And yeah. He, so you right. You, it, have to be it, you gotta be careful. I've been out with my daughters, both of them. And folks look at me strange. Now I'm like, look just like me. She <laughs> look like me. Right. She just dark. But folks, you ought to see the eyes folks be giving me. And sometimes I just go on and tell them, that's my daughter, that's my little girl there. And then they are, oh, okay. <laughs> like I'm sneaking out with somebody, you know. But that's just the way it is. I, I can't get that far. Uh -huh. But that's the way things are. Then he says here, what we said, the verse uh, 23. Think about this now. He said, and the verse, it said, now if you do these other things that we just talked about, Prophesying, not quenching the spirit, proving all things, abstaining for the very appearance of the evil. He said, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. Those things that you have in trouble with, he'll come in and he'll, he'll take it from you. He'll sanctify you holy. He'll set you apart. 
And then he says, I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The only way you can be blameless is you got to have God's spirit on your life. Amen. Huh? You got to have the salvation that Jesus worked for you and gave it to you. You got to have that upon your life. That's the only way you're going to be blameless. It says, faithful is he that called you who also will do it. Do what? Sanctify you holy so that you can live a holy life. Then he says here, we, we close, and he says, uh, Brother, pray for us. Greet all brethren with a holy kiss. Mm -hmm. Huh? Right. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle will be read unto all the holy brothers. Mm -hmm. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Then he ended by saying, Amen. 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 So in order for us to be a holy, go home and read it, study it. Holiness is not a place, it's a state of being. It's who you are, it's who you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be holy. And then if you're holy and you, you, you're righteous and the blood of Jesus is over your life, you have God's salvation. He gives you his Holy Spirit to seal you. That means to keep you. When you seal something, that means you want to be kept, right? So, so that's what the Holy Spirit do. It's keeping you. It's making you blameless. Then why? Because God can't see your mess. All he sees is blood and the spirit that's right that resides inside of you. There more questions or comments? Well, God bless you. Let us all stand. We create the soap, man. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your understanding. God, we're asking, Lord, that we all uh, be lights unto a dying world. Yeah. We all, yeah. Lord, to show somebody the way unto you, Lord. Yes. Lord, in Jesus' name, we yeah. ask the Lord protection over these three that, Lord, that have come yes. out tonight and that may be looking at on, on, on social media, Lord. Father, we're asking, Lord, a special blessing, Lord, over the bereaved family on yes. tonight. Lord, that they Jesus, we do pray. Amen. 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 Amen.